Welcome to Tender Tummy, your one-stop shopping for information and recipes for people with tender tummies. I'm Bonnie, and we're going to be cooking another gluten-free recipe today. Remember, gluten-free is for people who have celiac disease, which means that they cannot eat anything that contains the gluten that you find in wheat or barley or rye. Those recipes also work really well for someone like me who has a severe wheat allergy. Today we're here to bake the Staff of Life whole grain bread, hearty whole grain bread. Well, you say to yourself, I thought I'd have to give that up when I went gluten-free. Not true. The people in Oregon at Bob's Red Mill have put together an absolutely amazing hearty whole grain bread mix. And you're going to say to yourself, well, gee, um, why do I need to watch a video on how to make bread from a mix? Well, if you're like a lot of people, however, making a yeast bread can seem pretty daunting. You probably have had some failures in your life. And I wanted to show you how easy it is to do and to give you a few tips and tricks that I've found in making this bread that I think will help you get exactly the results you want. I especially love this bread mix because of all the fantastic flours in the blend. Buckwheat, garbanzo bean, fava bean, potato, tapioca, whole grain sorghum flour and whole grain teff, as well as sesame seeds and caraway. There is simply nothing else like it. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to open up Bob's mix here and put it into our KitchenAid. Pulling out the little yeast packet that we find in the mix. Here he is. Making sure to hang on to that. You don't want to cook that up. Now keep in mind we're not going to be using the bread hook on this. We're going to be using the regular flat beater if you're going to use a regular mixer, make sure that it's a sturdy one because this can be a kind of thick bread. The big issue with yeast bread is to make sure that everything is at the right temperature. Too hot and you kill the yeast, too cold and you kill the yeast. So the first thing that we need to do is that if you're like me, by the time that I remember I'm going to make a loaf of bread and I need to use eggs and it says the eggs have to be at room temperature, I don't want to have to wait a few hours to take those eggs out of the refrigerator to have them warm up. So I have a pretty neat trick. So our first step is going to be, we're going to use about three eggs in this recipe. So I'm going to put this in, them in this pan, and I am going to put hot water on them, and by the time we're ready to use them, they're going to be just the right temperature. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get the water to just the right temperature to be able to get our yeast activated. So I have already measured out the one and three quarters cups of water that we need to add to our bread mix and that we need to use to activate our yeast. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the stove on high and then I'm going to use our baking thermometer. This is a critical piece of, inf uh, of equipment for this recipe because we want to make sure the temperature is just right. Put this in and keep track of it because it really goes up pretty quickly. Our goal is to get it to right around 114 degrees. Pull this off the stove as it reaches 114 because what you're going to find sometimes, especially with a thin pot like this, is that the water keeps getting warmer even after you take it off the stove. Remember, you don't want it to go over 120. So if it does, if it starts to get too high, you can always run cold water with your sprayer on the bottom of the pan to reduce the heat more quickly. Add it to our water. And we need to set that aside and let it sit there for about five minutes because it has to get a little bit foamy in order to be ready to be used in the bread mix. We're going to set our timer for five minutes. That's going to be just about perfect also to make sure that those eggs that we've got bathing in the hot water come up to just the right temperature to be able to use in the mix. There goes our timer. So now it's time to start putting in all the ingredients into our bread mix. We've got our yeast is just perfect now. Nice and foamy. It's been getting ready for five minutes. We put that in there. We add one quarter cup of oil, and the oil I prefer is canola oil. It's a nice light oil, but it adds a really nice sense of moisture to the bread. Put that in there. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the highly scientific measurement that I use for the cider vinegar. Nice little sploosh. Now here's our eggs. They've been bathing in this nice warm water. 
Now I want to make sure because we're going to want the yolk from one egg and the whites from the other two eggs to go in there. So to make sure I don't get any bits of shell or anything in there, I'm going to go ahead and crack those. And I'm going to put them in this cup first. Kind of hard sometimes to pull out eggshell in a mix. So I want to make sure I don't put any eggshell into our nice bread. Now we turn on the mixer, but it's not for very long. 15 seconds is all that it takes. Use a spatula to get all that good bread dough back into the bowl for us. I'm going to use some Smart Balance Omega spray. There has been some concern that celiacs should not eat anything that might have grain alcohol in it. Further study shows that the gluten solids really don't seem to make it through the distillation process for either vinegar or for something like the grain alcohol that's merely used as a sort of carrier for this um, to be able to get the spray out into the pan. So we're really not too worried about it in that case, or at least check with your physician and check with your organizations that you trust to see whether you want to use the spray in your pan or not. So we put this into the pan. Now. What you do then from here is you cover your, uh, your bread mix with plastic wrap and you put it in a warm place for 40 to 45 minutes so that it has an opportunity to rise for that yeast to get a good start. The goal is to put it in a nice warm place where it will be free of drafts and trust me in my house that means the oven especially in the winter. So I set my oven to 80 degrees. After the bread's had a chance to rise for 40 to 45 minutes it should be just about even with the top of the pan. Remove that plastic wrap and then put a sheet of aluminum foil over the top. You're going to leave that on the bread up until the last 10 minutes when you're going to remove it so that the top crust doesn't get too brown. You want your oven at 375 degrees. The directions on the back of the mix suggest that you should bake the bread for 60 to 65 minutes. I found that that's a little on the high side. Time to pull off the aluminum foil. So the top of the bread can brown. Ten more minutes. 50 to 55 minutes is just about perfect. Gives me a nice brown crust and it has that nice sort of hollow thump that you're looking for in a well-baked loaf of bread. Now that's a great loaf of gluten-free bread. Let me use these silicone finger protectors which really help move that onto a cooling rack. We'll let that sit there for about five minutes. Give it a chance to cool before we take it out of the bread pan. And here we go. It comes right out. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This is Bonnie from TenderTummy.com urging you to come back often for more gluten-free recipes. But boy, there's nothing better than this hearty whole grain bread on a cold night. I think I'm going to go make another loaf.